that'll unplug the keyboard. Usually, this one hasn't been cleaned for I think a year or so. Um, dust will start in, in between the cracks of the keyboard, and so usually you could grab one of those computer duster cans at a store. But I have an air compressor I like to use. I usually like to start from one side and go in a diagonal way to the next side. This allows the dust to keep going one direction and eventually group up on one side. If they're usually too much, you can remove the key and just blow it out. But let's just go ahead and try it. keyboard looks mainly clean actually um, but one of the things that the you know duster cannot do is remove a lot of the dirt and um, well oils from your fingers and you know, bacteria and stuff like that that really uh, pile up over time and make the keyboard quite a disgusting thing um, you could find this stuff isopropyl alcohol at your local I don't know I got this one at a, at a dollar store um, this one is only 50% uh, concentrated. Um, I had a special order because in my area I couldn't find any 99%, uh, which is what you'd want to use for something a lot tougher. Um, so, one of the other things about this stuff is that it will uh, it's actually made to destroy bacteria and other gross things, so it also sanitizes the keyboard at the same time while removes the you know oil like nothing else. There's also lots of other cleaners out there, but this is nice stuff. So I, I typically will fold a uh, cloth that is, you know, you want to get something that doesn't leave behind a lot of uh, residue if you can. But I will just start with the 50% stuff. I, I'm just going to dump it on because uh, I want a lot this time. The stuff evaporates pretty quickly. but. It's a kind of time consuming process, so I'm going to um, fast forward it, but I'm just going to get the top of the keys for now. In between the cracks of the keys, um, you could either use the cloth and do it, or you could use gender Q-tips and just uh, dip them in the alcohol and uh, go in between the cracks like this. But um, you use up a lot of Q-tips in this process, but typically gets the cracks pretty well. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is polish off the rest of the residue I have with the stronger stuff. This stuff also can be used to clean all sorts of things. Um, a little bit too powerful for um, like medical things, I, I think, for 99%, but um, works great as a polish for you know cleaning thermal paste off your processor and heat sink. So. I'll use a little bit. This stuff's a little more valuable because I had to order it. But you might find some in your area. Who knows? Keys feel brand new. They, they have literally almost no oil on them. They're decontaminated, and you could say. <laughs> Let's go and plug her in. I don't need to do that. There we go.
get the shit shine now. <laughs> it's nice. Oh, almost one more thing. We'll plug it one more time. It doesn't hurt to clean the bottom of grommets to get kind of dirty. It's kind of a multi-purpose uh, alcohol cleaner. Whatever you want to call it. There's still some on the rag here. This is a good example of, uh, you can see it evaporate as I go over it. Of course, it's not a lot left on this rag, but it just evaporates. It's really fascinating. It doesn't evaporate as quickly as uh, acetone, but that stuff is would eat away this plastic. Better on metals. There we go. Okay, I hope this helps.